Now, uh, before we break for uh, lunch, we have an opportunity to reflect on VMC. Uh, 25 years is a milestone for any organization and certainly for VMC and it provides a chance for reflection on why it came into being, what its purpose did it serve, has it done what it set out to do, and finally what opportunities exist in the future. So if I could get our uh, four panelists to come down. Um, to begin this reflection, we have a panel of the distinguished old sages, and I use that term affectionately as several of them were, have been my mentors through the years to share their perspective on VMC's evolution. And our speakers include uh, Robert Paquin, who currently is the Vermont State Director of USDA Farm Services Agency, but was a long-term legislative assistant and congressional aide for Senator Leahy. We have Lawrence Forcier. Larry was the former dean of the UVM School of Natural Resources and College of Agriculture and Life Science. We have uh, with us Conrad Monica. Connie was the former state forester and commissioner of the Department of Forest, Parks, and Recreation, and all played critical roles in the establishment of the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative for, uh, 25 years ago. And they, along with key individuals from the U.S. Forest Service, brought together VMC partners and crafted a vision and direction for the organization that still serves us well today. And they'll still speak about those early foundational days and the impact that VMC has had through the years. And then finally, we're going to hear from Tom Barry, who's the current field rep for U.S. Senator Patrick Leahy, who will deliver some remarks on the behalf of the senator. So to start off, Bob Paquin. Sorry about the cane. I, I had uh, hip surgery, and uh, so I'm wobbling a little bit, but I feel a lot better than I did before. Um, <clears throat> in the interest of time, uh, I guess uh, I'm going to jump my prepared speech. Um, but an interesting thing uh, struck me when I was invited to speak was that uh, I look back to you know the the early '80s and uh, and then beyond, and and um, Larry, Connie, and uh, Molly Beatty and I all staffed a forest demonstration project uh, in the very early 80s in the Mad River Valley. And the, the purpose was to, to have forest landowners bring their, their land under management. And I think Connie was uh, assistant state forester. Larry was the assistant director of the School of Natural Resources. Uh, Molly was an extension forester. And I was a far more junior member of Senator Leahy's team in those days. And it was interesting that if you look at the trajectory of our careers and the different things we were able to work on uh, subsequently, uh, it, it was kind of neat. You know, Molly uh, was the first woman director of the Fish and Wildlife Service. Connie became the commissioner of Forests and Parks. Larry became the dean of virtually everything. Uh, and and uh, so, so that early little, we called it demo, and we were the demo alumni. And so here we are. Uh, but the interesting thing was, uh, through the 80s, I know how acid rain was mentioned, uh, Senator Leahy did invite Lee Thomas, who was then the director of the EPA, to come up to Vermont. And we hiked up Camel's Hump, and Hub Vogelman gave a great briefing. Uh, we're about 2,800 feet up, something like that. And um, that kind of led to this discussion of forest health. And, and Governor Kunin appointed a task force, uh, which was chaired by uh, uh, Dr. Lugenbuehl, Bill Lugenbuehl, who was then the dean of the UVM College of Medicine and an arborist in his own right. And one of the recommendations, the primary recommendation that grew out of that, of course, Connie was the primary staff support, I believe, for, for that effort. Uh, was the need for some continuous monitoring of the condition of the forest ecosystem and the communication of that to, as, as our current commissioner mentioned earlier, to policymakers and land managers. And then the, and the other part of this is the general public, because then they can provide the support that the policymakers need to, to 
do the right thing, if you will. Um, so anyway, what I'd like to do is ask uh, Larry and Connie in no particular order, if you, if you all would care to share a thought or two, I think, I think it'd be great. I haven't worn a sports jacket since I retired. I'm proud to say that. I have not got a haircut since I retired. I pull it out when I comb my hair. It, yeah, but that's just, it keeps it out of my eye. Um, it, 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 those are kind of interesting times, and it was just a little bit more reflection because it went beyond that, at least from where I was sitting at the time. Uh, the staffing of the committee led by Dr. Lugenbuehl was fantastic because it not only brought science to the table, but it brought back people to the table who just cared passionately about it and were observing changes that they didn't understand. It was at the time that Hub was working intensely to try and get people to believe that acid rain was a real issue. And coincidentally at that time, uh, the governor was the chair in the states for the New England governors and Eastern Canadian premiers. And the Forest Service was struggling uh, with trying to get the Canadian Forest Service and the US Forest Service uh, to line up on their assessments in forestry, uh, forest inventory and analysis, which was the precursor uh, from a nationwide statistical assessment of our forest resources into what ultimately was expanded to a forest health program uh, that now falls under Jim Hubbard's shop like almost everything else. Um, but the times are exciting. I mean, it was like an awakening that was going on at both the state level and the national level that we really had to have good sound data. And uh, I think there were some, some fortunate things that happened at that time, uh, partly because of the demo boys in Mali, um, but because there was an attitude, I think, that was shared upon everything. And I think um, that attitude, and I try to phrase it because it's a little lengthy, uh, but I want to read it. It was an attitude that was thorough, expansive in nature. It looked at continuity, and it looked at coordination. Uh, closely and collaboratively, we supported each other, and not just the discipline or the part of the discipline that was of the most interest to us. Uh, I think all of us believed that good information is based on good science. And we needed to have the practitioners and the scientists working together in order to sell the program, both here in Vermont and nationally. And we had some leaders, and Senator Leahy, Madeline Cunin, who were really ready to go that mile. And the Forest Service went with us hand in glove. And, uh, and we not only did it here in Vermont to really set a model, uh, but it was picked up and looked at and actually incorporated in some of the federal programs as well. So having said that, and having seen how far you've come from our very modest beginnings, uh, I'm really proud. As a, you're, you're, you're all, you should be very proud of what you're doing, how well you're doing to it, and the amount of collaboration that's going on. I think it's critical. So the future? Well, uh, more of the same. Don't stop. But when I say that, I look at two things. One is really think about getting your program out there to the people who use it, the landowners of the state, those that are so interested in the health of our ecosystems in the state, uh, 
and look to the vehicles that will include them and bring them into your club. Uh, I think of magazines like Northern Woodlands, who I'm amazed just to read the comments in that magazine about how hungry the public is for information based on good science. And I've got to be fair with you. Don't count on the money every single day. You're going to have to look for new money. It's very difficult to monitor something, to, to fund something in a continuum. Programs change, people's change. So look expansively on it, because I, for one, like to, like to see this continue. I think it's so useful, and you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. I tried to show Bob my comb. Um, this is great. I, I'm like Connie sitting here saying, wow. We envisioned managers talking with scientists, talking with political leaders, talking with citizens, and important within that citizen population were uh, students. You're doing it. Uh, how could we want anything any better? That, that is just so cool. Uh, we could thank people until uh, the salamanders come home, the Bicknell thrush comes home, whomever. But the point is um, that people did, I want to highlight one word Connie brought up early on was the passion. Uh, Tim Shabatskoy, Rich Perot. Incidentally, I'm a Vermont citizen who cares about the environment, and I'm not looking forward to day seven from today, because uh, Rich has been just sensational in being courageous with good information. I, I do want to talk about courage, uh, particularly when Connie's uh, doing characteristics. Uh, there had to be a lot of courage on some people's parts, the scientists, uh, the senator over and over again, um, the Forest Service running uh, against popularity, which is often dump something after three years because we're on to the next exciting venture. And then you look back and say, oh gosh, if we had only paid attention. Um, we used an ecosystem process throughout, whether it was the natural system or the human system. We, we did an, end up uh, having changing pieces. One person I can think of continuously in all of this, besides Rich and Sandy, was uh, Patrick Leahy uh, for this last 25 years. But let me quickly take you back maybe a little earlier, like when Connie was just beginning to chin himself. We were testing atom bombs, and that was going on way out west. And people who first picked that up that eventually got it into the public in terms of radiation were working in Vermont, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. Just little sites, just hanging in there. People on, their ground, on the ground. Uh, you know this, David, because you've heard her talk about it. Uh, I see faces when I see the, when I think about going from atomic bond testing, concerns with pesticides. Let me see how I would have done this. Uh, the nuclear winter concept, quite different than we've got global warming. Uh, human population growth, just before we get to Earth Day. Uh, Jim, you talked about the importance of paying attention to that. Have, I, we may not know whether we've got nuclear winter licked or not, but we still got issues, big issues with pesticides, human uh, development. Uh, acid rain, good discussion today. Uh, water quality and forest soil fertility came to the forefront. Often people from New England raising issues that were influencing the western part of this country and also part of a global movement. Um, mercury landscape fragmentation, uh, resilience, sustainability, uh, exotics. Are they going to be invasive or are they going to be friends? 
uh, exotics, are they going to drive out endangered species? All these things are not easy to get people to want to look at with big dollar projects and to have a whole bunch of isolated folks working. It really does take this cross-disciplinary communication. We don't say cross anymore, but what the heck. It takes an awful lot of communication among people who really care about the resource and the public. And we had great leadership for our little time period with uh, Bob Paquins and Connie Monica's people really willing to take risks to make things happen. Um, I think it's going to continue. I really do. I think in, I had another presentation to talk about the reward structure and how it needs to work cross, um, cross organizations. But I think what we're going to see is you've got to share. Vermont is a little point, but a very important point. And we have a culture that says we want to know what's happening to our forests. And we have a history of providing leadership nationally. And we will continue to. We care a lot. We're good at it. And if we share a lot, the uh, website is brilliant. I'm looking forward. I should have added to my little list of timing of big events. I should have talked about the development of GIS. We we're all involved in that for this state. Um, I should have talked about the wonders of the web. Demo did GIS. You remember that? The seed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, before we slip away for our beer and more reminiscences, just uh, please don't let this sucker die. You're not. You're doing great. It, it really does look superb. And uh, you got to talk to each other regardless of who you work for. Uh, the resource is too important, and it doesn't stop at a forest boundary. It doesn't stop at a state line. Uh, it's it's an ecosystem, man. Enjoy it. Thank you. Now, you got you got to understand these two guys. When we met to talk about this talk, these were the two guys that said they didn't want to say anything. <laughs> that, that I that I had to do it. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I, I'd like Tom to come up, Tom Berry from Senator Leahy's office. Uh, just a, you know, a, a quick thing. Um, there are a number of, of initiatives that are that are celebrating anniversaries: the Lake Champlain Basin Program, the Forest Legacy Program, uh, and you think about uh, some of the things that that Legacy, for example, started as a demonstration project in the Northern Forest, and now. Uh, now it's a national program. The same thing with the Farmland Protection Program. Uh, started as Farms for the Future here in, here in Vermont. So uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, my former uh, boss and, and Tom's current boss and all the support that he's provided us uh, all those years, uh, you know, for all those years. And, and uh, so, Tom, if you'd like to share a message from the senator, we'd love to hear it. Bob thought he was going to make comments, all he gets to do is MC. Let's, let's get Bob back up here in a second. I, I, I'll, go, I'll go real fast. Um, you know, first, to clear up any doubt, I'm not an old sage. Um, uh, but I work for one of the old sages, and I represent the senator uh, here today. And as Bob just commented, I want to know what kind of vitamins the old sages were taking in 1990, because Forest Legacy, National Organic Standards Act, um, the Lake Champlain Special Designation Act that established the Basin Program, and I, I see Basin Program staff here, and um, Vermont Monitoring Co-op, all established 25 years ago this year, uh, and all um, showing incredible prescience for things to come because every one of those programs is probably more important now than when it was established and they each have value only in the fact that they have been operated continuously large-scale land conservation work on lake champlain uh, ecosystem monitoring uh, developing a new way of doing agriculture none of this would have relevance if it hadn't continued so strong for 25 years and these uh, are more important now than they were and so really congratulations to the folks that had the foresight to establish these, and I'll include Senator Leahy in that, but also the folks that have preceded me here. 
And, uh, and many thanks on the Vermont Monitoring Co-op success because things have not, there have been bumps in the road and there will continue to be, but the U.S. Forest Service has just been steadfast in supporting this program. They understand the value of it. All of the researchers, the, the, uh, the leadership here at University of Vermont and in the state of Vermont and otherwise who have brought this program successfully through its first 25 years. Um, uh, and as, you know, as I've noted, that it, these things are even more important going forward. And it's, it, you know, hopefully we can be as creative now and have as much foresight of what we need to be known over, over the next 25 years. But uh, continuation of collecting the, uh, the data and analyzing it and sharing it, you know, data uh, have no relevance in, in, unless they're, they're shared and explored. And so thank you to all of the researchers uh, and managers here today and over the years who have made the most of, of this work. Um, and Senator Leahy remains committed to this program. You know, he, he's commented often that the longer he studies the value of the seniority system in the Senate and of longevity, the, the, um, the more he sees its importance and, and he, can, he intends to continue uh, studying that seniority system for some time to come and he'll remain committed to this program. So uh, on behalf of uh, Senator Leahy, thank you to the folks that established this, but to everybody who has kept it moving forward over the years. So, so thank you, Larry, Larry and Connie, Tom and Bob. We appreciate that reflection. And we spent uh, most of the morning reflecting on either uh, monitoring results or, or the uh, 25 years of VMC. This afternoon's a little bit more about the future of VMC, and we're gonna have an opportunity to have some more presentations and then some working groups. But right now, the thing of order is lunch.